Oh. What do I think about most? I'd probably say my husband and my kids. Mindset to me means um, the frame of mind that I choose to take on, which will be a collection of thoughts. So a mindset could be a um, positive mindset, a set, you know, a certain group of thoughts, um, and that would be a positive mindset. It could be a success mindset, you know, thinking about all things success. It could be um, a negative mindset, you know, thinking about all the things that could go wrong. So mindset to me would be that frame of mind, that particular group of thoughts that I choose to think about at that time. What's my mindset in this moment in time or generally? So right now my mindset is mindfulness. I've just come back from doing a mindfulness session with kids. I'm a mindfulness coach, teacher as well. Um, so it's all about being in the now and experiencing the moment, noticing what's happening around us. So right now I feel like I've, I've got this heightened awareness because I've literally just um, come back from do, doing that session and here I am talking to you. Um, I would say all the way through these last few months my mindset has been quite positive and present. Hmm. Very deep questions today Emma. So um, my thoughts have changed over my life. I think just as we grow on the outside, we grow on the inside and we can either grow by expanding or we can grow the other way where, and by that I mean, you know, when we can start thinking limiting thoughts, um, which I think is really going the wrong way, you know, where we can start to become more fearful. Um, so I think because of the, training that I was blessed enough to get in my 20s um, my thoughts have continued to grow and expand and embrace the positives um, being here now in the present noticing what's happening around me so that's one way that they've definitely changed because there's a time in my life where I was just running on autopilot I wasn't aware of what was actually happening in terms of my emotions, my thoughts, um, and I used to get quite stressed in my job that I was in. I would um, um, not know how to bring myself out of it, how to switch my mindset, how to even just experience the moment. If I ever experienced the moment before the training that I had, um, it was random. It just happened, it was not deliberate. So I had different times in my life where all of a sudden I felt this sense of peace. But I didn't know how to recreate it. I didn't know how to get back into that place of calm, that place, that happy place, um, until I studied how my mind works. Because not only have I studied mindfulness, I've also studied neuro-linguistic programming, NLP, which just helps me take charge of my thoughts that little bit more. So... Um, Although we can deal with circumstances outside of us, in the initial chat that we had and the painting that you did with me was, you know, the sink or swim. It was, we can't, we can't stop the waves, but we can learn how to surf. So the way that I've learned how to surf, regardless of the circumstances, regardless of how big, big those waves might get, is to know how to bring myself out of whatever situation it might be and focus on my breath, focus on what I can see, hear, feel, taste and smell and just come into the moment. Just have that little bit of emotional detachment from whatever it is that might be happening to witness it and then get that clarity of mind and then go back in and deal with it. So I think that's the biggest way that my thoughts have changed. Depends on the person really. Um, yeah, depends on the person. Um, more and more people are becoming aware that they can take charge of their mind and they can take charge of their mindset. So for those people, great. 
and for those that have still to learn that then um you know um there was a time where i didn't know how to do it either so i i, I have faith and hope that um everybody will get there and hopefully in 10 20 years um knowing that we need to have a good mental diet knowing that we can take charge of our mind knowing that we can um sit in the driver's seat of our thoughts rather than letting our thoughts run us i'm hoping that it's going to be as common as going to the gym and looking after the physical body you know knowing how to have good mental health yes i do yes i do and i've really been tested with this as well because through um the pandemic i did actually get um the coronavirus and i just stayed present all the way through so after i got better um you know other people said things to me like oh i can't even imagine what that mental stress must have been like not knowing if the virus was going to go to the next stage and i just thought to myself i thought well i didn't even think that because i was just in the moment and in that moment i just thought to myself i've just got the flu and i'm okay and yeah um i just stayed present i didn't go into the fear of what was on the news what was in the media what was happening to other people the scare stories um you know the we all know people that have been really really negatively negatively affected by the virus i just thought no i'm okay and for me it's like the flu and i'm just using this time to meditate and heal so i put into practice everything i knew about health and well-being and even after i've had the virus i have um, experienced fatigue which i'm still shaking uh, shaking off and again i just be in the moment as much as I can to let my body heal and let it do what it needs to do without my my mind getting in the way. Yeah, well, as I just explained, I'm, exp I'm experiencing this fatigue um, that a few people have said that they've got after having COVID. So um, I'm just, you know, taking the right supplements, eating the right food, taking it easy uh, i'm seeing this as a time of rest um for me right now when lockdown happened a lot of people had that chance to rest and to pause i didn't for me things got even busier um so it's only now that i'm actually when my body's saying hang on slow down um that i am and listening to that and just allowing my energy levels to slowly um come back up So I draw my strength from my family. Um, they've been absolutely amazing. Um, noticing all the positives and all the love around me and all the blessings that I have in my life. And of course, coming into the moment. I find that there's a sense of calmness, a sense of strength. If I could just, you know, beautiful summer's day like now, look out the window, you know, just the blue sky, see the greenness of the trees, hear the birds, um, feel the breeze, that nice warm breeze, feel my feet on the floor, um, smell the summer's, you know, that hot summer's day smell of freshly cut grass and flowers and taste the taste that's in my mouth right now. Um, when I do that, I empty and I feel this sense of peace and I do get a lot of strength from that through having um, initially um, when lockdown started um, I'm also a radio presenter and I was on a prime time show so I knew there was a lot of people turning to me for strength and resilience um, so through that period as well in terms of giving um, to others um, and helping other people when the fear initially first hit of um, the pandemic, of how to get them through it um, with that positive mindset. And then also myself, um, when I um, tested positive for the virus and more so afterwards, 
um, you know, since um, since I've got better, um, but then had this fatigue that's come up afterwards, um, more so then. Why are you talking about strength? Um, you're talking about where we draw our strength from. So uh, health and well-being, of course, the stronger we are, um, the um, the more healthy we are, the better our well-being is, whether it's physically or mentally. Yes, it has. Um, pros and cons. So the cons would be that there are conditions that are being missed, that are serious. Um, I mentioned to you that we just had a bereavement as well. Cancer uh, diagnosis that should have been picked up, that just wasn't picked up because of the coronavirus. Um, so there's the cons. There's you know, a lot of people that would have been going for normal testing or maybe even smears or, you know, um, coming up with other symptoms that maybe it's not so straightforward at the moment with um, the pandemic happening. Um, pros in terms of, I think people are actually getting to the point of self-care, taking responsibility. You know, what can we as individuals do to boost our immune system, to look after ourselves physically? Are we taking that exercise are we eating the right food are we getting the right sleep are we meditating are we um thinking about our mental health you know in lockdown um people haven't been socializing people maybe haven't had that family support that they would have had beforehand um you know so are we are we you know finding other ways to reach out are we finding other ways to look after ourselves um, I don't think people were this focused on self-care before because it might have been, you know, um, a different healthcare model, a different societal model where if something happened, oh, it's all right, we'll deal with it or we'll get on with it. But since the coronavirus has hit, um, people are a lot more aware, you know, are they hand washing? Are they, you know, what are they doing with their own hygiene and, and so on? Well, depending on when you're watching this video, this interview, um, you may be watching it as a part of history on the other side of the pandemic in many years from now. Um, you may be watching it while we're going through this. If it's while we're going through this, I would just say, hang in there. Um, you know, if you've got time, which a lot of people have at the moment, maybe down to furlough or, um, you know, uh, being out of work or not being able to go to work for whatever reason, maybe studies, you know, not being able to study the way that you would have done. Learn a new skill, get creative, maybe a little bit of art um, to bring yourself into the moment. Art is great for bringing ourselves into the moment. Maybe pick up a new musical instrument, learn how to do that, learn a new skill, mindfulness, big advocate of mindfulness, take charge of your mind. Um, if you're watching this afterwards and it's a part of history, um, then I would just say that no matter where we're at in um, human history, there's things that we could be doing to help ourselves. There's things that we could be doing to take charge of our minds. Let's not wait for something negative to happen like what has happened in 2020 with this global pandemic for us to think, how do I learn how to surf? because those waves can come. John Kabat-Zinn, a mindfulness teacher, he took mindfulness into the West. He said, you can't stop the waves, but you can learn how to surf. So the waves have been massive. A lot of people have been, you know, really finding it very difficult, but let's learn how to surf. Let's get on that, get on that board and surf those waves. And it is possible to learn a new skill. It is possible to look after ourselves. It is possible to stay calm in the moment regardless of what's happening around us and the calmer we are the healthier we are the more strength we have the more resilience we have to deal with situations so that's my message going out to everybody <laughs>